This is the story of two young guys, bound in friendship and in destiny. Ronald and Skinny, as often happened, went out for a picnic together to spend the day in the neighborhood countryside. Suddenly, Ronald pulled a couple of little plums out of his basket and gave one of them to his friend. Mmm, delicious. Deliciously lethal. <laughs> Note how the slow motion makes everything more epic. The boy's corpse stayed there for hours, enveloped by blades of grass, until all of a sudden, something happened. A new spark was instilled in Skinny's body, reduced abruptly to a skeleton, and slammed him inside Ronald's wardrobe, cursed to watch over his friend for the rest of his days. Or at least until today, when our story starts. Morning, sunshine. Hi, Nat. Forgive me, but I didn't sleep very well tonight. Are you sure you really want to talk to him? I have no other choice. He'll have a heart attack if you ask me, and he'll end up keeping you company in the wardrobe. I really hope not. Do you know where Ronald's gone? Everybody left a couple of hours ago, but I don't know where they went. They were all very nervous. I don't know why exactly. It'll be the usual sale at the mall. The Mother Superior must have straightened them up as usual. When will you stop eating those things? Would you care for some, maybe? How many times do I have to tell you that I'm allergic to plums? Just looking at them, I'm getting hives. Man, you don't have any skin at all. And anyway, they're nuts. Otherwise, why would Ronald have given me this name? He probably just wanted to be... alternative. You're a lost cause. Hasn't Ronald spoken yet? You should know that by now. He hasn't said a word since you died in front of his eyes. I don't want his soul to be damned forever. If that stubborn guy won't open his lips for himself, I'll take steps to loosen his tongue. Don't hurt him too much. I have to run to the bathroom. All this excitement loosened my bladder. I like this room. Start here then. Put the little pet in the van. In the meantime, I'll prepare the boxes in the living room. And don't do it like last time when you got hit by a car while loading the stuff. There are colored books on the walls! But you don't even know which side a book opens on. I like colored books. Do you know what I don't like? Working for free to pay for broken things marked fragile. Do you understand? This carpet! It's soft as a marshmallow. I like marshmallows. <laughs> I should have listened to my dad when he told me to be a florist. Ah, I really needed a shower. Boss, it won't open. Let's keep working on the ground floor then. In the meantime, I'll ask the lady about a key. I'm afraid this damn move will take longer than expected. Move? And what should I do now? I'm coming, I'm coming. Apologies for the delay. I was late with a tutorial of another video game. Players are not what they used to be anymore. Let's uh, cut to the chase. I'm here to explain the game controls to you. Well, I'm not interested. I'm not asking you, Skinny. Let your player decide. Okay, okay. I just hope you don't miss something while playing. All I'm asking is that you take a look inside that green satchel. I'll take care of it, as long as you leave us alone after. Ma, there's gold in this here bag. Ah, uh, no. It's just pyrite. Don't be fooled by appearances. It could be more useful than you can imagine. See you soon.
Even at his age, Ronald can't really get enough of squeezing this thing. I can't imagine what the bear would do to Ronald if he still had his spine. I'd give him a nice tattoo on his back for starters. You have to understand, the bear is convinced he's married to the duck. I don't want any trouble. Wise decision. Don't ask any questions, believe me. Let's just say I'm not exactly interested in the item. 201 times is more than enough. I don't know what's more disgusting, this or the hair removal strips of Ronald's mother. Not worth it. The psych meds of Cousin Jason. Come to think of it, we've suddenly lost track of him. This isn't like reading tea leaves in a cup. There's nothing in there I want to see. You've probably already figured out I'm not exactly an ace. In my defense, you have to admit that it's not easy to throw without real joints. You're embarrassing. That's it. I sense trouble. That must be the van of the moving company. I absolutely have to find a way to get in there before they finish and leave. That's not a dinky toy. It just looks small from up here. One of the countless houses of the Wayne family. Mr. Wayne is not often seen here in the city. He never stops by to talk with anyone. One of the countless houses Mr. Wayne is not the Murrays are really very nice people. When we were children, Ronald and I often played with Cooper, but after the divorce, he went to live with his mother. That house has been for sale for years, but nobody has ever seen the owners. Nor is it clear if the mysterious Mr. Richards even really exists. What happened to my wardrobe? I can't be separated from my wardrobe. It's a matter of life or death. Well, I mean, you know. Do you think this is the right moment to play games? One of the movers must have left it here. I suggest you avoid careless moves, if you value your skin. I already lost mine a while ago. I still remember the day I didn't notice her, but she saw me. Fortunately, she mistook me for Ronald. She fattened him up for the next three months. It's a sort of big ball of dust. And who the hell are you? Have some respect, stupid bony human. You're looking at the future conqueror of the world. <laughs> Only dumb characters in this game. Don't laugh, that goes for you too. Jumping Jiminy. Not me. I can't jump. I have no legs. And my name's not Jiminy. I meant, where did you come from? From under the hardwood floor. I was stuck 
there for years. But now I'm finally free and will have my revenge. <laughs> Who do you want to take revenge on? The world. I have nobody to take revenge on in particular, so I will take my vengeance out on the world. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Listen, not to curb your enthusiasm, but you look pretty harmless to me. What? I mean, you don't look blessed with any particular abilities, or of great intellect, or any intellect. You can't expect to get very far without a well-constructed plan. Ah, you're right. Think about it, okay? Who would be your nemesis? The Swiffer? I don't know any Swiffer. Forget it. I have to go. Bye. Now I finally have the courage to tell you. A while back, I skipped dinner. Please, Grandma, don't look at me that way. Stop glaring at me, all judgy-eyed. Okay, you win. I'll go and get a sandwich right now. Ronald's father has never been a green thumb kind of man, but you should see the level of dedication he has for them. Ronald's mother is very satisfied too. She says they give a nice scent to the whole place. Sure. I'm already conspicuous enough for my skeletal appearance. Just imagine a drug put... I mean, an herbalist skeleton. No way, those two guys are still down there. I suggest you avoid careless moves if you value your skin. I already lost mine a while ago. I know where this is going. With this trick, we lost four relatives in eight of the cat's nine lives. That critter won't get closer to the living room, even under torture. I can't and mostly don't want to touch it. I think you need a permit to carry something like that. As they always say, you never know what might come in handy. disaster I made with some apricot marmalade years ago. I never understood how Ronald's parents could think it was Sigmund Freud's face. Phallic symbols everywhere, right Sig? <laughs> 